Hi, I'm Leilani, and welcome to Leilani Drinks the Brown Stuff in a very, very cold night at the Avocado Ranch. It is freezing, so if you see my breath, it should get warmed up soon, hopefully. So, right after I did my play, I ended up making it to Tennessee to shoot an indie thriller called Don't Die, where I play Sally. And as a closing gift, uh, I made some kimchi and I shared a bottle of the Shadow Ridge bourbon with my folks. And one of the producers came up to me and decided to give me a Tennessee whiskey. Now I had been looking for one, I wanted a local one. And when I went to like the local liquor store there, believe it or not, it was almost everything that we have on our shelves here. So I was a little disappointed and was like, mm, maybe I'll get another one at the airport or not. Well, hold the presses because of course in Tennessee, uh, the big one is there. And the big one is what we're getting into tonight. So tonight we are getting into Jack Daniels, old number seven, Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey. It is 80 proof, it is 40% ABV, and it has been aged, distilled, bottled in Lynchburg, Tennessee at the Jack Distillery. Their mash bill is about 80% corn, 12% barley, and 8% rye. Uh, the reason why they call it a sour mash is because they use a bit of the starter yeast from their last batch, and they mix it up with a new batch, let it ferment for about six days, and then they distill it in a copper still uh, and allow that to condense and vaporize. But only once. They don't mess around. Uh, they only do it once. <laughs> no double distilled here around here. Now, they also uh, like burn, I wanna say. <laughs> Uh, they burn and make their own charcoal. And the way they do that is by stacking up hard sugar maple pallets, about five feet. They douse that in raw unaged whiskey and then they set it all ablaze. And they do that three days a week, three times a day in order to get that kind of mellow charcoal, maple yeast, a little sweeter taste uh, that Tennessee is known for. And uh, if you've seen my other episode, which the man will come up shortly, then you will know where this process came from. Now, they also draw about 800 gallons of water per minute via their cave spring hollow that lays about a couple miles uh, beneath the earth's surface. And Jack bought this in 1860s for about $2,148. So you can imagine how much money that was and what a big investment that was for him to do so. And getting off into the history, 1864 is when Jasper Newton Daniel, known as Jack, left home and ended up living and working at the Reverend Dan Call farm. And here is where he met the enslaved man who I spoke about a little earlier and who I'd done a whiskey show already on, Nathan Nearest Green, Uncle Nearest, who actually taught him the art of whiskey making. Uh, Nathan, Uncle Nearest would go on to work at the Jack Distillery, being his head distiller at the time, which is now kind of known, but wasn't known before. And the head distiller at that time would be known as the master distiller now. And this is where I just get upset and digress because we are talking about someone who actually could have had his own whiskey distillery but he's an enslaved black man so where's the general generational welfare so all these things that just make me go ah but finally jack daniels has told the story and uncle nearest has definitely told the story so yay to that but talking about picking oneself up from the bootstrap he could have probably had a farm done his own thing 
we would have heard about Uncle Nearest a long, long time ago. Now, in uh, 1866 is when uh, the Jack Distillery gets registered as the first in the U.S. And from there, Jack opens up the distillery shortly thereafter. In 1904, the old number seven wins gold. And that will be the first of seven at the St. Louis, Missouri World Fair. Now, 1906, it's nothing happens. <laughs> But this freak accident of Jack not being able to open up a safe and kicking it out of frustration and breaking his toe, it ends up leading to his early passing, which is crazy. But you got to understand, 1900s, medical, what was happening. So in 1907, with no wife, no kids, he ends up passing his distillery, the land, over to his nephew, Lem Motlow. And his nephew, along with a few other head distillers in the passing of years, end up going through two shutdowns. And that includes the Prohibition and World War II. But here we are. And in 2020, Chris Fletcher was named the new head master distiller over at Jack Distillery. Now, they don't put ages on their bottle because they state it's ready when it's ready. And they do that by using very accomplished whiskey tasters <laughs> to say it's ready. So, I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's be ready together. Now, as I'm opening up this bottle, I will say that obviously with Jack being such a popular brand and on every store that this was actually my first foray into whiskey. Um, when I got into the barley tea and then started drinking, obviously this is the beast's favorite. Uh, it's a staple at their house and so when we were at an Easter party with Mama-san, <laughs> I decided to have some. And then I was like, oh my God, I think I like whiskey. And I think I like it a lot. And I drink a little bit too much, more than the tipsy kind of amount, um, because I don't normally drink past the tipsy point. I know what my drink level threshold is now. And I like to drink for the taste, uh, not to get crazy. So. I ended up drinking Jack all day. So it's been a while and we are doing a woman's pour on this Jack. <laughs> um, and you know, eventually as I moved on and my tasty buds grew, I kind of veered away from Jack and wasn't as into it anymore and kind of become a local whiskey snob as my beast calls me. <laughs> and he's nodding his head, yes. <laughs> and so, I wanted to give Jack a chance. So tonight, we are giving Jack a chance with my taste buds. I can definitely smell the sweetness and uh, the caramel and vanilla. A little bit of the orange zest and some smoke. And that's about what I'm getting right now. A hint of vanilla and some spice, like some cinnamony apples is happening, it's going on. So, <sighs> here's to some Jack drinking, all right? <laughs> Let me try it again. The orange isn't as pronounced as most of the mass bottled whiskeys like Jim Beam and a few of the others that I have tried. Um, it's a little sweeter tasting and I could see why most people do enjoy Jack Daniels. I mean, it's got a mellower kind of sweeter flavor to it. I do feel like there is a slight ethanol rub. And although the orange zest is there, what's so fantastic because of the sugar maple charcoal that they use, that um, it kind of gives it kind of like a I don't know, a caramelized orange kind of feel to it, which I understand. It's nice <laughs> for most people. Snub. <laughs> 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 Look, 
Leilani drinks the brown stuff and Leilani tries not to be snobby about the whiskey. Like I said, the beast loves this whiskey. This is his thing, him and his friend. His friend is called Jack and Coke because everyone knows that they always drink Jack and Coke when they're out. And I will go for other bottles that I've not heard of <laughs> because I want to try them. But <sighs> it's not harsh on my palate. It is actually easy on the the tongue I do feel a little hint of the spice that rye in the backdrop um, and the orange does mix pretty decently well with the caramel the sugar maple that they use and it's you know Jack <laughs> so I understand. I get why you love this. I totally understand. But Leilani Drinks the Brown Stuff has to give Jack Daniels two and three quarter kisses. Three quarters. Three quarters. This is the first time ever. I can't. I have to do three quarters. Half or a whole. No, you can do a three quarter no, lip. Can't. Yes, you can. Oh. Uh, oh, let me taste it again. He's saying I can't do two and Pick. three quarters. Damn it. <laughs> two and a half. Because I think it's there with the Jim Beans and stuff a little bit nicer. But, you know, <laughs> someone's not happy with me right now. <laughs> but I totally get it. Way and I understand. <laughs> it is slightly better than Jim Beans. <laughs> Why well, I was gonna give two and three quarters, but since you had me go down to a half, I have to like place it where I placed all those other ones. Otherwise, it would have been a quarter up because of the mellow sweetness and the orangey taste. But it's Jack, yo. <laughs> and I'm just not jacked on Jack. Cheers.